Today we're looking at trade setups on the Forex pair US dollar Japanese yen and Netflix Inc. We're about to do this. Hi, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuides.com. You may remember last Friday I told you about our winter storm in Texas. The temperature dipped to minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 16 Celsius. Well, in typical Texas fashion, I had to run the air conditioner here on Thursday because the temperature got up to like 76 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees for you Celsius folks. And of course the Texas sun beating down just made us really toasty. So there you go. I guess you can say we recovered from the storm. <laughs> Today we're looking at a bear flag on the currency pair US dollar Japanese yen and a descending triangle on Netflix Inc. We're going to take a look at those, but first, once again, we're going to look at a few charts. And later on, this week's trading maxim. Happy Monday and happy March. So the euro pound popped up, hit my trailing stop right here at 86.94 for a total of 159 pips on the second half and a total account gain of 1.2%. Done with the euro pound for now. I took a short on Bitcoin when it closed down below the 48 700 point here but it happened so fast I wasn't able to share that with you guys not sure what it's doing yet in any case I'm still holding that one short if it closes back above the 48 700 I'll take the loss I mention this because I'm still looking to buy Bitcoin on a close above this high of 58 400 if it gets back up there now I just want to be really clear about something here I am NOT calling for Bitcoin to go higher that's just not how I do things. I don't trade what I think is going to happen. I trade what I see. So the plan is if we get a candle close above 58.4, I'll buy it. If it doesn't go up there, I won't. It's as simple as that. The US dollar Mexican peso closed back inside the range right here. So I took the hit on this one. Closed for minus 2312 pips which sounds crazy, but it's really not as crazy because U.S. dollar Mexican has really tiny pips. Anyway, it was a 1.1% account loss. And of course, on the very next day, came down here and hit my stop loss. So we are well out of it up here at 25093. But then the interesting thing is the very next day, it popped up here and hit our target. That is pretty annoying, of course, but it happens sometimes. Anyway, I'm done with the U.S.-Mexican for now. The Euro-Swiss franc triggered a buy on Monday right here and hit the first target on Tuesday right here. Now that's what I call momentum. <laughs> Closed half for profit, set the stop to break even on the remainder. Now we're just waiting. Now we're just waiting for the parabolic SAR to get up in here to start trailing the stops. The U.S. dollar Swissy triggered a buy on Tuesday, right there, and we're still waiting for it to hit the first target. Came really close on Friday, so keep an eye on it. It should do something early this week. The cryptocurrency Dogecoin triggered a buy on Wednesday, right here, and then pulled back and retested the bull flag twice. Still waiting for it to go up and hit the target. And lastly, the Euro Swedish Krona triggered a buy signal on Friday, and I bought it. The stop is 10, 10, 11. First target is 10, 24, 21. We'll see how it goes. You may remember that we had our bottom of our range right about there, and we got short and then took a hit on this one, and I moved this down. Now, of course, it's pushed up with a lot of momentum to the top of the range. So we'll see how it goes. And that's all the active trades for today. Let's take a look at today's trade picks. Today, we're looking at a bear flag on the currency pair US dollar Japanese yen. Just to make sure everyone understands, a proper bear flag consists of an incoming downtrend like this one here and then an ascending parallel price channel like this. A bear flag is a bearish consolidation, so I will only take a sell trigger on this. And the pattern is confirmed by a decline in volume and volatility down here 
I measure the volatility using the average true range or ATR. And here's the trade plan. We're going to sell a daily candle close below the bear flag. On the breaking candle, to enter a full size position, we want to see the volume bar reach at least to the volume average. If it doesn't reach the average but does reach 75% of the average, I'll open a half size position to reduce risk. You can calculate the percentage by dividing this volume by this volume average, and you should get at least 0.75. If you don't get that, I suggest you stand aside. Stop loss is one and a half times the ATR. First target is one times the ATR. So when this thing breaks down here, prepare to set up your sell order. Look down here at the ATR, multiply that number by 1.5, and that will be the distance behind for your stop loss. And 1 times the ATR will be the distance to measure for your first target. If after entering the trade we get a candle that closes back inside the flag, we'll take the loss right then and not wait for it to hit the stop loss because a breakout of the pattern should be explosive and hit our target fairly quickly. If not and the momentum goes away, we want to shut the trade down without taking a full stop if possible. When the price hits our first target, we'll close half the position for profit and set the stop loss to break even on the remainder. We'll then follow stops as price moves in our direction until the market takes us out. I will only risk about 2% of my account on each trade. And that's today's setup on the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair. The next setup for today is a descending triangle on Netflix Inc. I really hope I don't have to tell anyone what Netflix is. <laughs> In any case, a descending triangle consists of a strong level of support, like this one here at 518, with several historical touches or approaches of the line, and a series of lower highs as fewer and fewer traders are thinking about taking this long. Each time the price gets back down to the support level, it chips away at buy orders until it finally breaks through. It should break out of the pattern with strong momentum. The descending triangle is a bearish pattern and I will only take a sell signal on it. And a good consolidation pattern like this, as I said, should be accompanied by a decline in volume and volatility. I measure the volatility using the average true range or ATR. And here's the trade plan. We're going to sell a daily candle close below the triangle or below 518. I'm not going to bore you with the whole spiel again. The management details are always the same. If there's at least average volume, enter a full size position. If there's only 75% of the volume, enter a half size position. Otherwise, stand aside. The stop loss is one and a half times the ATR, and the first target is one times the ATR. If you get a candle close back in the triangle after you enter the position, close the position and take the loss. Get half off for profit when it hits the first target, and move the stop to break even on the remainder. Again, 2% risk on this trade. And that's today's setup on Netflix Inc. All right, guys. That is how I manage these trades. You do you, okay? Make sure you understand what you're comfortable with and you trade it that way. And to help me keep a handle on the psychological side of trading, I use the trading maxims. A maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, rule of conduct, or a proverbial saying. You guys know the deal. Use whatever tools you need to help you maintain discipline because discipline and consistency in everything are paramount. And today, Tim's trading maxim number 72. Some people feel affronted when something they thought to be true doesn't happen. If that's the case, then your sense of risk is much higher and that leads to risk aversion. You need to be able to be comfortable in uncertainty. And that's a quote from General James Mattis, who is a retired United States Marine Corps four-star general who served as the 26th U.S. Secretary of Defense from January 2017 to January 2019. Now, this particular quote can't be any more applicable to trading. When you've got a tested and proven trading plan and a tested and proven rule set, then you need to execute your trades every time your rules are satisfied. It doesn't matter if you lost the last 10 trades, you can't be risk averse. If you find yourself getting apprehensive and not taking trades that satisfy the rules, 
then you need to take a break from trading because you're just going to end up losing. As the general said, you need to be comfortable in uncertainty. Remember our U.S. dollar Japanese yen trade plan for today. We're going to sell a daily candle close below the bear flag. And our Netflix trade plan for today. We're going to sell a daily candle close below the triangle or below 518. For both trades, take a full size position if you've got average volume or better. Half size position if you've got 75% volume or better. Your stop loss is one and a half times the ATR and your first target is one times the ATR. Don't forget to sign up for my Trading Picks email list to get early notification of these picks. The link is in the description box below. And that's all for today's video. Come back Wednesday for the next installment of the Trading Education Series. We'll be looking at moving average trading strategy this week. Be here Friday for my Strategy of the Week and next Monday for my Trade Picks. My videos come out at 3 p.m. New York time barring unforeseen circumstance. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. Remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. If this video helped you, click the like below, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to be notified of our videos in the future. Have a great week, and I'll see you Wednesday.